Hello friends of Software Entertainment. Today I will show you the brand new feature Sulu Blocks. My name is Roland and I am PHP trainer and consultant for testing and refactoring. I also have the agency Testify where we help teams to get new tests as an external test team. This actual project here is a Sulu CMS web page for Nevercode alone. It's completely open source on GitHub with all the examples and all the code here you will find there. The link is here down in the video description. My main focus here is to show you how I add a new block element and I will also show you what new kind of pages you can do with this great feature. At least we will push everything with our GitLab pipeline directly to the live system. And when you have questions, just do this here to the comments or when you have anything what I can improve on my videos, just leave a comment. This makes me better. So a lot of topics, check out the description. There are jump points to the different chapters. Now have fun. Okay, let's start with coding from scratch. I'm here on my home folder and now I want to jump in my actual project. This is here my NCA Sulu page. And now I want to make a new branch, the checkout branch. And this is front end slash CTA button. And yeah, this is the name now for the branch and for my work here. And after that, I can start my DDEV. DDEV is a local Docker environment and with this Docker environment, I can handle very good PHP projects with different kind of PHP versions. I can also import and export databases and content. Super simple. This is super powerful. Check this out when you don't have this on your local setup. Now this is a normal setup here. I have here my PHP application and here is my theme forest template. As you can see here, and this is the power of Sulu, you can just have your normal Sulu structure with config templates, the source folder, the public folder. It's a full stack Symfony content management system. So I can just make my application editable and this is super powerful. You can sure also start with uh, CMS projects with Sulu, but it will also help you a lot when you need marketing features on your different kind of applications. So for now, we will see here in the front end what I want to do. I can log in here on slash admin and now I am here in the backend and now I will show you what I want to do. I want to add a new block element to a page. I have here now pages and here is a page web sprint. What is a new web design marketing thing about my little company and here are blocks. So I have here content like my team and uh, something like this here, bullet points or whatever, some references and a team. And you see here team subline and here you can see what kind of block it is. So I have now 
four blocks and I want to add a new block with this video call element here. This element has a headline, a little description here and a call to action button. And when we look this on the front end, we have here our page slash web sprint. And then now you can see here now the page on my full screen. And then I have here something um, for the clients. And then we have references and after that we have the team and then another element and then an element with some icons. And now we have this element here. And when I think about the page, I'd like to have this line maybe between the first element and the second element. And here on the Zulu blocks, as you see here now, you have this icon list element. You have here on the drop down an icon like a computer and a little text and the slogan what is inside of this pop-up thing here and now you can imagine that um, editor maybe say hey let's do this on the second element state here and then you can drag and drop it and then it moves under the references and this is a very cool feature okay so let's add a new element we have here every time a configuration and a trick template this are the only two things that have to match here in Zulu and this is everything what you need to do to add elements. You see in other videos how I make normal content elements. This is quite similar. So I have here configuration and under the configuration are templates and under the templates are includes and under this includes we have here now our educate theme forest. This is a structure here because I have here different kinds of layouts. You will see that the start page here is a different layout than the training pages. And so I use different layouts here for my pages. And this is a structure here. So I have educate and under educate there is one XML file where are references to my blocks snippet XML configuration for this little block element. And as so you see here, it would be super simple to do a call to action. Okay, let's add a call to action block here. So here are the blocks and now we just add a new file called call to action dot XML. And we have here now an empty XML file and so then I can say 
control J and I have this configuration for the blocks loader, but also here as live template for my XML include file, what I have to include. Here on this tip, you can see a um, video about PHP Storm live templates, what makes my work super fast and super powerful. I just can press enter. And now I have here this structure directly from the description. And I can say call to action. You see that it also writes here the name. So I can say I can edit things on two lines directly. Then I press enter. And you see here also there are marks where I jump next time when I press enter and I say here this is my CTA button this will be the little snippet visible on the back end for the editor and I have here some properties. And as I said, I have some kind of a headline, a little description, a button with a text to a page. And so let's check out the magic of live templates. So I can say here, please give me a headline. And then I have the property headline and um, Normally I need prefixes here. So when you make normal page templates, you would write here CTA in front of headline like this. But for me now, this is just the cool thing about pseudo blocks is it is, is rendered on um, own keys. Later we will see it on the front end on own Twig keys so I can use headline. And this is a good thing because um, I now know better what is a variable name and I can remember it simpler when I'm working later on the Twig template. So for now we have just a headline here. A headline is just a text line with this param headline and when it um, has this property headline it will be bigger on the admin interface and then we have a little slogan and i have to check if the slogan here is a p tag or just it's a p-tag, so the editor will have the full power and can say here's something bold or set a link or whatever. It's a description. And then we will have here our link to page. To the link text to page then we have here button text and button link and then I will say okay it's just button text and button link and as you see here you have a cold span 6 we have a 12 grid here and you can say when you have cold span 6 and 6 it would be in the same line and that's it. It is finished. Um, to have less problems on our development process, I would like to add the um, Twig template also now on this step. But first, we just have to add our new element here to the drop down can say hey 
give me the cta.xml. This is everything what I need to have everything to my backend. My full work for this element is done now. I just have to make the render part and for this I will not get to the original content now because this is maybe too fast for you. I have here the same structure template includes educate blocks and we just have our HTML block now here we can say new file called cta dot html dot trick and I can say here maybe it's just an h2 what says our cta element to make this work for now and when we will look here on our blocks.html.twig, this is the dynamic wizard. This is um, the big thing here because it will get our block content to content. So we can work on every element here with our good known content um, variable. And also here it will load dynamically the block type and the block type as you see it here default type is um, CTA and so we don't have to do anything here we just have to add our HTML trick file so cool for now we just have just finished our work we um, the only thing we have to do is uh, to make the real HTML here um, but I will show you how to develop things here and um, I have a lot of experience with this but I will bring you the knowledge how to work and how to um, figure out things here. So um, we will want to see this um, content type working on our admin area. And when we do things like this, we have to clear the cache the hard way. So I can just say, hey, I connect to my Docker container, to my Docker web container. There are different containers here is a MySQL container. And you see it here. There's a DB container, there's a web container, and there is some kind of a bridge container. But I want to connect to the web container. And the web container is um, the default container where you connect with DDEV. So you just can write DDEV SSH. And now I am connected to this container here and I say, Please remove var cache star anything here. And when I will now go to my page here from WebSprint, add block. And now I have here on my drop down the CTA button. And when I select this, the layout here will switch to my new configuration and my new configuration is a headline, a description, a text and a link to a page. For example now CTA headline here is some cool stuff 
and we will check this is working as HTML so maybe I make something bold here and maybe I set a link here an external link HTTPS slash slash never called alone dot de maybe it's blank when I want this and I say confirm okay cool so I have this here and now I will do uh, call me or contact me otherwise you will maybe think this is a phone number and uh, yeah I just will select the page like here our imprint maybe I don't have a contact page here maybe I, I have to do something on the next video so this is a confirmation and everything now I can say publish and when I reload the front end now I have here somewhere our CTA element and I also say um, this must go much more up so I want this on the second um, position here I move this up to the second position and then I have here CTA element and I can save and close and so now I just have to do my work on the HTML here okay let me close this developer bar here we have here a Symfony application and the Symfony application is running in development environment and on development environment you got this very nice debug bar here and now we want to work on our trick template and on our trick template we want to see the values from the editor from the backend so we can just do one thing here dump internal this uh, will give us an internal dump from content and when I do this and reload the front end then I will have the content from this element here on my debug bar and now I just can open this here on a blank page and after that I can remove it here so I cannot forget it um, you see my pipeline and my PHP uh, stand and everything what I have here so I cannot forget to dump here because my um, my local setup with the um, captain hook will say oh you have forgotten the dump you can also watch this in this video here and for now I have all this information on this tab here so I have the type what I don't need but I have my headline description a button text and a link to a page what we have to um, um, load clearer here so now let's check out our HTML from this element and we have it still here because on our educate template there is this call to action button somewhere this is footer and over this footer we have this element here footer let's check it if this video call this is this element here 
video call to get in touch. Okay, this is not so cool because it's in this footer thing here. I hope this will work as dynamic as I want it. I hope I just can use this container here, maybe with something around from another element. But for now I can say, okay, give me this element to here. And then there was a headline. Just give it out content dot headline and here there was the description and the description was real HTML markup and you don't need this um, P tag here and this is a thing what super often happens that you have a class on the P tag and it's every time um, a bit tricky to render um, the class on this dynamic element so for me a little trick is just to use a div here to get the class and then use a p tag inside of this div i hope that this works here most of the time it will work content dot this and I make a pipe and a raw and this will render my HTML or my content my text raw with no escaping to the front end and I have this button here with uh, href I will also maybe just use a link here. <laughs> Hope that this will work. We will see. So I just use an A tag here because the class button and the thing is defined here. And then I can say, okay, give me this here, make it clear, and just make an ref here. So this is my A tag now. And I have here now the simple thing. This is my content dot button text. I don't have to look to the XML configuration because I know that it's very similar because I every time use my live templates and the live templates um, have a super clear setup for me and um, so I can just work really easy on it and um, yeah for now I want to see the front end if this will work maybe it's not green Okay, so we have this here. I don't will fix this thing here on the video for you now because you only want to see how to make an um, element here. It's contact me. This is uh, the thing here from my backend. And the last thing is to add the link. So a link is uh, maybe a internal link is a more complex element. You see that we got this ID in the front end and we want to load the path for this ID. And um, I have a Sulu trick, trick, Sulu target content load path. And when I enter this, I just have to say here, okay, I make here content dot button link. 
and then the Sulu load content will give me all information for this ID like um, description or whatever title and uh, excerpt images and so on and I just want to have the pass here and then I want to render this pass on my href pass oh it's target sorry and that's it and when I reload the frontend now you will see that I have here imprint see it here and when I press on it it goes to the imprint and um, yeah for now everything is done here um, I don't can push it live or bring it live this night because of the green background maybe we can do this really fast here it's just the background of this here footer top and footer top got background color but not more information maybe i can use i think footer well, maybe it makes some problems on a smartphone view but The green thing is just outside of this box here. So what can I do? Just add the thing here. Or I can add the class here on the diff element also. I think this also will work. Let me check this when I could be. I'm not front-end developer, but maybe we get some green things here. It's okay for me, maybe the color is not the best here, but I have here the same problem. For me, this task is solved now. That's it. We have here some one new line on our blocks. Makes it bigger here. We have here one new line on our uh, blocks and we have um, new files this is a cta xml configuration and our template finish work for cta button okay it looks is okay Cool, cool. Exit. Push. So we can bring this live today. This is a cool thing. Um, my GitLab pipeline. And on our pseudo project, we'll run a pipeline now. And a little explaining of this pipeline for now and then I will go in a, a super fast modus. You see that it's nearby eight minutes. This page will be built and deployed. After that there is a static code analyze with um, here like uh, PHP um, code sniffer, PHP stan and um, XML code analyze that will say that everything is fine here and after that 
the tests, acceptance tests and unit tests will also be fired. And um, I will show you what happened on the acceptance tests later when this will be ready. So remember what I have done so far. I added three files, checked out if everything is working on my local environment on the backend. And after that, I just pushed it here to my GitLab. And in GitLab, there's a pipeline. And this pipeline is also completely open source in this project. You get all these files here. And as you see here, now my code analyze runs through. Then there are unit tests. And after the unit tests, there will be acceptance tests. And what we have here is that um, there will be a few acceptance tests and we will check one test here right now. Okay, now here you see that there is a front-end link for my acceptance tests and I just can open it here in a new tab and now you will see that there is an exactly copy of my life environment. Here is some problem with images but this is not the thing here what let the tests fail. Maybe I can write better tests if the images are clear here. But you can also log in here. And I will enter my password here, and it's a never caught alone um, domain here. And here it is. Can say autofill. Then I can log in. I have here my web spaces, and then I have my web sprint page here then I have this content elements and when I check here on my drop down list there is my button and I also could validate now if this is working I can say here headline from feature branch here we go my text and select the page maybe I just go to the start page why not and say save and publish and now I can check out my front end here on a new tab web sprint this page is not um, published so far because it's actually in development as you see but also the content is uh, on development Then I have this uh, page here and when I scroll down we have here headline from feature branch. This is the same element you see it here. You can compare it if this is working fine. It's working fine for me. The important thing on my setup is that here now every page is checked. Are all my subpages, all my features working when I do some changes here. Everything JavaScript is working, my social um, media setups comes in here, my, envir en my environment variables 
are cool and working and I have nothing to do with it. I just pushed and this is made all by my pipeline in eight minutes. And I also have here a dedicated um, feature branch working where you can do a preview with actual database and okay actual images are not working but normally there are also the actual images and this is so cool okay i don't will show you every test here but the tests are complete and um, yeah there were three tests skipped i'm working on um, some cookie Mm, tests here and this is not working so like I wanted. I have to change it to Claro. This is another topic, but I will also show it to you here in the videos. And now I go back here to my pipelines. And this is also a thing what I can do with my smartphone when I'm out of this room here. I just have to push and can walk to the park, go with my kids uh, to the playground or whatever and have my smartphone and my smartphone on my smartphone I just will see, hey, here everything is green and when everything is green I can say, okay, I press this here Create merge request. I also can do this just in time and then ask me if it will merge when all tests and stages are green. So I don't have to wait here for everything for anything. I have here now my changes. Can check if everything is fine with it. Here I have information about the pipeline, everything is fine with it. It was a bit too long because of a um, Docker caching problem. These are new Docker images, it's a new year, so it was a bit longer than 8 minutes, much longer than 8 minutes. But I would have the same problems when I do it manual. Yes, um, then I also have to wait all the time. The thing when I do this manual it will cost super much time for me because I have to wait for things that I'm also really not interested in. Submit merge request. You can also say here delete the source or whatever. I have this here. The review state, yes. It's a review now. You have here some merge requests. And this is now my merge request. Normally when you are in Teams you have here some more things. And then I can say another developer, hey, I have a merge request. Please review the things I have done. And then you can say okay I will review it and you can say here delete source branch when it is merged and also you can see here the changes and you can say here uh, hey this makes problems for me you can add a comment here and say hey this makes a lot of problems maybe put this up or whatever and um, then you can say the developer please fix this and um, this is a really awesome tool but I also can just say merge and when I have clicked this button and I also can click this button when I want when everything is green I can also automate this thing so my test checked the whole environment if it's working on a new machine on a new docker setup and say hey this thing is working and then merge this automatically here in GitLab now I have to do this manually and then it will also run a new pipeline 
there's some kind of difference. You see that here is some kind of difference. We have here four um, stages and here are some other stages. We will check this here. We also have the build and deploy um, task and I do also front end tests here. Now it's double tested, but it could be that um, there is another merge coming up to the master. And so we have a new state there. Maybe another guy also worked on a CTA button and uh, do, do something um, what's do conflicts not on code, not in Git, but on my application that something is not working anymore. So I just do these tests here a second time. There is a second reason for this, because sometimes I just do all the stuff here with my smartphone when I'm out in the world. And um, then I can say, hey, everything is also tested here on a real front end with a real browser. I cannot do this with my smartphone when I'm on the road. I want to have this tested here. And after that, I can say, okay, roll out this to production. So this would go to the live system. And after that, I can say, hey, something happened. Please roll back the upgrade and make everything what was before my work. Or I can say confirm upgrade and uh, this will open the master branch that uh, other merchants can go inside. So that was my video. Thank you for watching. Maybe you want some stuff like I have here on the video, so contact me. I'm open source. I do a lot of things for the community. I will help you. I will help your team. And just give me, please, a thumb up here on YouTube and maybe follow this channel because I will do much more stuff like this. Thank you.